You said before this fight you wanted to see if you still had that dog in you. I think it's safe to say you still got the dog in you after this one. I still got it like a collector's item. <laughs> you have been doing this for a long time, Dustin. How does it feel now to still get a big win, knock another man out cold tonight, and you did it, and it was a very, very tough opponent there in uh, Benoit Saint-Denis. How does that feel, man? You've been doing it for a long time. 30th appearance in the UFC, still going strong. It feels good, man. Uh, the old dog still got it. You know, when I first came into the sport, 35 was young, you know, but now kids are doing this so early. The sport's grown so much that 35 is older now when you look at the, the, the bigger picture in mixed martial arts. But it feels good, man. I had a long training camp. Me and Gamrod both won tonight, and we both pushed each other so hard for the last seven weeks in training camp. You know, we were great looks for each other's opponents, and we, we both got better in the last seven weeks, and, and we earned those wins. Well, talk about the fight, man. I mean, obviously, a lot happened. I mean, that guy came out with a very serious, serious pace, which I'm sure you expected, but uh, what do you remember most about the fight? How I was, was it playing out for you? I was interested to see, when I sat on the stool, I was interested to see if he can keep it up for five rounds, you know, because he was squeezing really hard. He felt very strong. Um, positionally, not the tightest. I'm saying that I know I, I got ridden out in a couple of, you know, a lot of positions. Um, but not, not crazy technical position-wise. He was just very, very strong. And I didn't think he can keep it up for five rounds. And I, that's what I thought we would end up seeing. But I just caught him with a good, good shot. Were you feeling, uh, what were you feeling from him in terms of just, uh, like you said, he was, he was kind of putting everything into his shots. Just his energy level and just his confidence. Did you see any changes in that as the fight played out? It's uh, still chaotic inside the octagon for me, even though I've been doing this a lot. But I could hear him straining and squeezing. I could feel the, the nervousness in him. And I was just thinking the longer this goes, I'm going to start picking this guy apart. Guillotine attempts. You want to talk to me about those? You miss everyone, you don't jump. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Mike Brown's been telling me all camp. Gamrod's been telling me all camp. Stop jumping guillotine. Stop jumping. I'm going to get somebody one day. Is that just, uh, is, is that just like, you almost can't can't control it. It's just an instinct thing that you just like you feel that position and go on it. Your, your team your team itself are saying don't go for those and you still are. Yeah, and then he told me on the on the stool don't do it again. <laughs> and then in the, in the second round, whenever he shot in and I got his neck, I heard him say don't do it, and I did it again. You talk about the uh, I mean, so, landing that right hand and you see him go down and then you follow up with with this with the second right hand and then you walk off and the crowd is going crazy. Again, that is a moment that you've experienced numerous times in your career. Conor McGregor, MSG, you, you, you've, you've had these big, big wins. What does that feel like, man, walking away from another man that you just beat in, in front of a, a, a big time crowd? With the, with the weight on my back, fighting this contender outside of the top 10 when all my previous fights have been title fights, number one contender fights, Justin Gaethje, Oliveira, like it's just been a bunch of big names. So going down the rankings and fighting someone that people aren't too familiar with, was a big risk for me, but I respect and honor what we do. And Eddie Alvarez gave me my shot, former champion, took a chance against a guy coming up. And that's just, you have to, you have to do that. That's just the nature of what we do. I'm 45 years old. I might need to have another kid so I can name him Dustin. I mean, <laughs> this guy is a bona fide legend, man. You have so much respect from your fellow fighters. I couldn't find a single pro fighter who was picking Benoit Santini in this fight. And to think that you're able to take out this young hungry lion at 27 years old like this, your appetite for this fight just further endeared you to this great fan base. I'm trying not to cuss up here. You're the goddamn man. Hey, That's I appreciate I it. Take that, odds makers. So this guillotine hunting, right? I mean, <laughs> Dude, I'm about to jump one on you right now. <laughs> No, I know Mike Brown obviously talked about it. You're going to get somebody by guillotine. I, I got to. That's just the odds are on my side, I think, <laughs> at this point. Dustin, you know, we were talking about this a little bit before the show went live. Winning this fight against a guy in this fashion, and like you said, I mean, there were – John just said that there was nobody pro picking against you, but I think, you know, odds makers have made you an underdog in this one. Everyone was aware of what this guy was doing. Does it make you want to win a title a little bit more just because it shows that I still got it, I still got it against these guys who are in their 20s? Does it make you – does it, does it make the title come to your mind a little bit more? I always want that thing. You know, that's why I put on a pair of gloves the first time in my life was to be the world champion, to be the best I can be. That's always why I fought. Everything else was just like a byproduct of the hard work and the grind and the success I've, the success I've had trying to get to that title. You know, that was always the, the main focus. So you're 35 years of age. And by the way, I'm just being told you did win the fight of the night bonus, so the check is going to be <laughs> yes. a little bit sadder. Yes. Dude, I really wanted to. I really wanted that. The money's great, but um, I believe I have the most fight of the nights in UFC history. Not just lightweight, but in UFC history. Now I was yeah. tied for first place. Right. 
And I feel like that's a longevity record that's going to stick around for a while, you yeah. know? So in terms of the rest of your career, a lot of people were asking this week, over under three and a half fights left for Dustin Poirier. And a lot of people were answering me under. On the strength of this result, I know sometimes you think about the end, but how many more fights are we going to see out of Dustin Poirier in the UFC? I don't know, you know. I, my body still feels good. Of course, I'm 35 and I have 50 fights total, you know. Right mixed martial arts fights but I still feel good you know and I had fun this training camp it just I got to get home and like reassess everything talk with my wife talk with my coaches my management and just kind of see what's next you know it is always an honor man watching you fight and especially having you up at the desk talking about it congratulations on the win congratulations again on your 30th appearance in the UFC man I, I do speak for everybody it's an honor watching you compete and uh, it was a fantastic performance again tonight. And by the way, best hot sauce that you can buy, best hot sauce you can find in the world. Make sure you go pick it up. I love that stuff. It, it boosts your punching power by 10%. Ah! It's crazy. Yeah, we need to send some to France to Benoit Santini. Congratulations.